the 5th of May, we have elections across all corners of the United Kingdom. This time, all home nations will have some form of participatory democracy. This year, there are almost 4,000 walls up and down the country across England, Scotland and Wales, and there are almost 7,000 council seats, council jobs up for grabs. In Northern Ireland, you have the assembly elections. In Scotland and Wales, you have a full council reset. Everyone living in Scotland, everyone living in Wales will have the vote. But in England, it's a little more complicated. In 2021, many of England's urban and rural counties came out to vote. You have places like Liverpool up, as well as places like Cornwall, Devon, Sussex, and so forth. This time round, however, it's all urban. It's all built up Britain with the occasional townships. You have Greater London, you have Leeds, you have Manchester, you have Sunderland, Newcastle. And as a consequence, the vast majority of the seats up this time round were Labour. But these seats, were last up in 2018. These neighbourhoods have been holding elections in 2019, in the general election of 2019 as well, and in the May local elections of 2021. They have been holding elections since, and since 2018, there has been a lot of political change. The political trends, the safe seats, the marginals, they've shifted since 2018. That's key, that's an important bit we all need to understand. Take Dudley in the black country. In 2017 and 18, it was a pretty marginal borough. In 2019 and 2021, Dudley hasn't been a marginal. In the general election of 2019, both seats went conservative by a damning margin. In the 2021 local elections, council seat after council seat fell from Labour's grip into Tory hands. Let's just remember, the seats up this time round are the types of seats that fell conservative in 2019 and 2021, but they're currently represented by the Labour Party because the last election for these seats was in, you guessed it, 2018. Now that context is key. What we may be seeing this year is that in quite a lot of these locales, there may be conservative gains by default. Labour could do, be doing a lot better than last year in May 2021, and a lot better than the December general election, but you could still have Labour losses to the Conservatives, because what are we comparing things with? 2018. Here's a few things to watch out for this year in the local elections to come. Labour holds in the Red Wall. If Labour were to hold seats they didn't hold in 2019 or 2021, then they would be doing much better than those elections. But a Labour hold isn't quite as sexy as a Labour gain. Last year was a bad year to be a Labour member. You had the vaccine rollout boosting Tory party poll numbers. You had the perceived success of the Brexit deal. Boris Johnson's Conservatives were leading by as much as they were leading over Jeremy Corbyn's Labour in December 2019. What happened last May was a rout for the Labour Party, similar on a scale to that which was achieved for the Tories in 2019. Now the situation has been reversed. We have a Labour lead of around about five, six, seven percentage points in the polls at present. This is something we haven't really seen since around about 2012, 2013, maybe 2014, really. We haven't had a strong, significant, sizable Labour lead in the polls for quite some time now. So we're in new territory. We don't know how many Conservative seats will fall red, if any, because again, we are comparing our changes in England at least with 2018. That's the key thing. Keep remembering that this election. It will be more telling if Labour holds on in places like Hindburn, Burnley, Amber Valley, Hartlepool, Nuneaton and other such locales, the so-called marginals that matter, than it does in gaining a borough like Wandsworth in South West London. Also to watch out for the goings on in Blue Wall England. The marginals that matter do change every election period and what we have started to see is in some traditionally Tory locales, there have been voter shifts, voter movement, demographic change, and indeed younger people coming out from the inner cities to smaller towns. And what that means is the political climate there does change quite significantly. There could be some new marginals in the future, seats that were once traditionally Tory now breaking for other parties. Watch out for Liberal Democrat gains in St Albans, in Somerset, in Tunbridge Wells, and even watch out for Labour ones in places like Worthing on the Sussex coast, not too far from Brighton. And finally, the race for second place in Scotland. No one on this island nation can escape the Convy Lab fight. 
In 2017, the Scottish Conservatives came second against the Scottish National Party, beating Scottish Labour for the first time in a council election since the 1970s. History was made that day, as Ruth Davidson's Conservatives attracted staunch, middle-class and, most importantly of all, unionist voters from Labour to the Tories. They doubled their council seats in the process, rendering Labour to quite a distant third. Place. This time round, things could change again. Anna Sawa's Labour is in the ascendancy. Some polls show them overtaking Douglas Ross's Conservatives. We don't really know how well things could go because last time round in the Scottish Parliament elections of last year, we saw a narrow fight for second place. And in the end, the Scottish Conservatives did emerge as the second largest party in Scotland. This time round, however, things could change. Lots to watch out for, but it's worth just knowing this. Boris Johnson's reputation and his future as Prime Minister rests on these local election results. His reputation, damaged by Partygate, ruined by the cost of living, is in tatters. Keir Starmer's Labour Party is looking for some form of comeback. Let's see what happens.